So, dear uh, brothers uh, in Christ, uh, we thank our uh, Lord uh, Jesus Christ and our Heavenly Father for giving yet another opportunity to discuss about his wonderful words of life. Uh, dear brethren, last week uh, uh, we studied about the uh, uh, Holy Spirit. We came to know from the scriptures that the Holy Spirit is not a person, that it is a power from God. So, uh, the reason that the uh, Holy Spirit is compared to He or uh, is, is called as Comforter, we saw the reasons that uh, He is actually used to, just to signify a masculine gender because uh, in our Bible, our God is never compared to a feminine uh, gender nor to a neutral gender, but is compared to a, you see, a masculine gender. Hence, that word he is uh, typically used uh, uh, when referring to the Holy Spirit because it is the power which uh, actually generates and which actually uh, comes from our Almighty God. And uh, we also saw that why the word comforter is given in the entire Bible. It comes only four times in the Bible. So it doesn't come uh, much more than that one. So reason for that one also we have seen that why this uh, very, very important uh, truth comes only four times uh, in the Bible. Uh, it should have come uh, many times uh, rather, but if you see, it is uh, only mentioned four times in the Bible and reason also we have seen that uh, Jesus uh, wanted to comfort his disciples. That is the reason that uh, uh, <coughs> these uh, four times it appears only in the Gospel of John. Okay, now after we have seen that the uh, Holy Spirit is not a person, you see, let us uh, proceed uh, further to a very important class today. So this today class is going to be uh, mostly probably it might go on to uh, two or three classes. So definitely there will be a lot of doubts. You see a lot of questions may arise. I request everybody to remain calm till the all the three classes are over. After all the three classes are over, any questions, any doubts without any hesitation, you see, please ask. We will reason out from the scriptures. Okay. Now, uh, <coughs> let us read, you see, one uh, verse, brother. Deuteronomy 6 4, brother. Can anybody read, brother? Deuteronomy 6 4. Mosa, brother, Krishna, brother. Okay, brother. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. See, it says Deuteronomy 6 4. Hear, O Israel, hear, the Lord our God is how many Lord, if you see. It is uh, not two, three, or five, six, seven. No, nor uh, is he any, you see, multiple gods. He says, the Lord our God is one Lord. He is only one. So, even when God uh, gave the commandment to people of Israel, the Ten Commandments, it was clearly mentioned in those Ten Commandments that you shall have no other gods than that you are only one true God. Let us read Exodus 20, verse 3. Krishna, brother, can you read, brother? Is it okay? Sure, sir. Okay. 23. <clears throat> Those shalt have no other gods before me. Very good. So, those shall have no other gods before me. So, this clearly says that he is the only one God. So, there is no other God. Even... Our Lord Jesus, when he was on earth, he quoted the same verse telling to the people of Israel that the Lord, you see, our God is only one God. Let us read Mark 12, 29, brother. Mark 12, chapter 29th verse, brother. Huh. Anybody can read? Ashish, brother, can you read? Would you like to read? Mark 12. Ah, 1229. Read Krishna, brother. Okay, I'll read. And Jesus answered him, the first of all, the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. See, the first of all the commandment is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Dear brethren, our Lord himself is telling that uh, our, you see, God is only one God. You see, the same question that Jesus asked to the disciples. 
we all remember you say as uh, jesus was going once with his disciples on the way for a ministry you see this is suddenly part of this question to the disciple saying what do the people think about me then suddenly immediately the disciples reacted and said lord everybody think that you are elia some people think that uh, you are john the baptist and still some people think that you are jeremiah and uh, one of the prophets was supposed to come uh, which was foretold by moses uh, then suddenly uh, jesus stops and uh, asks them okay uh, let the people give their opinion but what about you what do you think you see and suddenly one of the disciples gives a wonderful answer now let us read what was that answer mausam uh, brother can you read matthew 16 chapter verses 14 to verses 17 brother hmm. okay brother and they said some said that though art john the baptist some elisa and other germans are one of the prophet he said unto them but whom shall you that i am and simon peter answer and said simon peter answer and said though art the christ the son of the living god Ooh. and jesus answer and said unto him bless art thou Simon Borzona for flesh and blood had not revealed in unto the but my father which is in heaven very good brother so here as soon as jesus put this question immediately you see simon peter see apostle peter spontaneously gives the reply saying that uh, you are uh, what uh, you are christ the son of the living god isn't it no what peter told was it wrong or correct what reply peter gave was it correct or was it wrong tell me what was the reply that peter gave he said it is correct yes it is correct what what reply did peter give he said you are christ huh? son of living god son of living god correct no what some other correct no that's what peter yes, replied now was this reply correct or wrong this is correct this is correct yes or else if peter would have given a wrong reply jesus would never have appreciated peter the answer given was absolutely right immediately jesus appreciated peter saying this is not you giving the reply by my father which is in heaven he is speaking through you he is the one who is motivating you to speak god isn't it so he said blessed art thou simon burjona flesh and blood that not reveal this to you but my father in heaven has revealed you see the father has revealed this truth to you that who is jesus jesus is the son of god who is jesus jesus is the son of son of god son of god okay now imagine if uh, this answer was right huh? jesus appreciated him but imagine if peter would have given a wrong reply what would have jesus told peter what would have been the reaction of uh, jesus towards peter can anybody think what uh, jesus would have told peter you know what he would have told he would have immediately rebuked peter in front of everybody because we read in the same chapter in verse 23 when peter gave a wrong reply jesus corrected him condemned him before everybody you see and how did he uh, correct peter how did he condemn peter let us read verse 23 brother ha uh, verse 23 brother same chapter verse 23 brother hmm. but he turned and said unto peter get thee behind me satan do art an offense unto me for the sovereigns not the things that be of god but those that be of man see what did immediately you see uh, 
and Jesus said to Peter, he rebuked him saying, get behind me, Satan. You see, just because the attitude and the reply of uh, Peter was wrong, he immediately corrected him before everybody. Imagine if Jesus has corrected him few minutes after telling that Christ is a living uh, son of the living God. <clears throat> if uh, the reply of Peter in verse uh, uh, 16 <clears throat> would have been wrong, Jesus would have boldly, you see, without even hes any hesitation, called Peter as uh, Satan there itself. But instead of that one, he appreciated Peter saying that thou art, you see, blessed. And Father in heaven has revealed this one to you. Dear brethren, this clearly proves that who is Jesus? He clearly proves the identity of Jesus. That Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus, you see, who is he? Is he God or is he Son of God? Tell me, is he God or is he son of God? What did uh, Peter say? Son of God. Son of God. You see, if uh, Peter would have uh, uh, replied wrongly, Jesus would have corrected him on the spot. Uh, dear brethren, many of our Christians, without even reading the Bible properly, misunderstand the Bible and uh, claim that God himself came and died for us on the cross. You say, dear brethren, many people think that God uh, died for us. Uh, no, dear brethren, God never died for us. But it is His Son, our Lord, our Savior. You see, our Master, He came and died for us on the cross. Uh, you see, but it was not our Almighty God. Why? Why? Why can't our Almighty God come and die? Why can't God come and die on the cross? Uh, dear brethren, God is immortal. The meaning of immortal means God can never die. The one who can never die cannot come and die on the cross. Therefore, he sent his son to die on the cross, dear brethren. The Bible says that nobody has seen God. And nobody can see God in this flesh and live. The Bible clearly tells that one. Let us read a few verses, brother. First Timothy 6.16, brother. Please read. First Timothy 6.16. Krishna, brother, or Moshe, brother, can you read? Who only hath immortally dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto whom no man hath seen nor can see to whom be honor and power everlasting. Amen. See, who only hath the immortality. Underline this verse, dear brethren. Who only is the only one who is having immortality. And where is he living? He is dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto whom no man has seen. Nobody has seen God, dear brethren. Nor can they see. He is living in such unapproachable light, dear brethren. If God cannot be seen by mortal human beings, dear brethren, huh? if he is immortal, how can he come and die on the cross, dear brethren? This is a point which we need to think. Therefore, Peter clearly said, Thou art the son of the living God. You see, let us read 1 uh, John 4.12. Muslim brother, can you read? 1 John 4.12. Hmm. No man hath seen God at any time. But brother, no man has seen God at which time? Any time. Any time. Any time is what? Every time. Let it be any period from the creation of man Nobody has seen God. This is not what I am telling. This is what the Bible is saying. See, I am not adding any verses. I am not getting any explanation. Simple Bible verses. This clearly says, no man has seen God at any time. Let it be any time. You take any period. 
no man has ever seen. Let us read one more verse, brother. Then how did we come to know about God? John, first chapter, 18th verse, brother. John, first chapter, 18th verse, brother. Hmm. Anyone can read. Anyone who is uh, ready with the Bible, they can read. No man has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he had declared him. Ah, no man has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son. You see who? The only begotten Son, who is in the bosom of the Father, he has declared who is... God to us, dear friend, this is the truth. And that son is totally different from that God. Let us read 1 Timothy 1.17, brother. 1 Timothy 1.17. 1 Timothy 1.17. Read more some Now on to the king, internal, emotion, immortal, invisible, the only wise God. Be honor and glory for ever and ever. Amen. See? Now unto the king eternal. Immortal. Underline. What is the meaning of the word immortal? One who can never die. That is the meaning of the word immortal. Invisible. Invisible means what? Can it be seen? Can it be seen? We cannot see. No. Cannot see. Correct. That is the meaning of invisible. So God is invisible. Then how can we see God? That is the reason clearly says nobody has seen God. Even Jesus tells that one brother. John 537 brother. John 537 brother. Huh? Uh, Krishna brother read. And the father himself which hath sent me hath borne witness of me you, you have neither heard his voice at any time nor seen his shape. See? You have never heard his voice at any time. Let it be any time. You take it any time. You have never heard his voice nor seen his shape. Dear brethren, if I or you would have told this verse, you could never trust those words. But Jesus himself, dear brethren, you see, our master, our Lord and Savior who died for us, he is telling it from his mouth that nobody has seen God. Of course, we can trust our master's words who never tells lies. You see, if he was that one true God, he would have clearly mentioned, I am that one true God who has come from heaven to die for you, dear brethren. But Jesus never used those terms Rather, he clearly says, nobody has seen God at any time. And nobody can see. And Jesus is the, you see, image of that uh, invisible God. Read uh, Colossians 1.15, brother. Colossians 1.15, brother. Um. Who is the image of the invisible God? The firstborn of every creature. Jesus is actually the image, the Xerox copy of that one invisible God. This is the truth, dear brethren, of the Bible. So, many people think that, uh, you see, huh? God himself died on the cross. What does the Bible say? Huh? God died for us. No. Very favorite verse of all the Christians. John 3.16. What does it say? Huh? What does it say? Ashish Pada read with her. John 3.16. Hmm. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. You see, God so loved the world. How much he loved the world that uh, he gave his only begotten son. You see, he says, uh, that, uh, you see, God loved the world so much that he did not come and die on the cross, dear brethren. But he gave his only begotten son, Jesus. You see, the Bible says that no man can see God and live. Exodus 33.20, brother. Can anybody read, brother? Exodus 33.20. 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 Exodus
कृष्णा बदर मौसम बदर Exodus 33:20 बदर and he said do cannot see my face for dear shall no man see me and live no man can see god and live if no man can see god and live whom did abraham see whom did moses see in the burning bush whom did adam you see speak unto the garden of eden the brand definitely these questions will come into our mind you see for all these questions we should we search the answer huh where where should we search for the answers for all these questions tell me where if you have any questions from the bible where should we seek the answer brother should we seek it uh, anywhere in the world or from the bible from the bible yes from the bible the bible says This... isaiah 34 16 seek the word of god search the word of god you see search the scriptures here a little huh there a little very good for the bible bible itself is a dictionary now abraham you see the brethren huh everybody think that uh, god himself put a promise on himself and said uh, huh you see that i will bless thee let us read that verse brother genesis 22:16 genesis 22:16 brother kindly read brother genesis 22:16 krishna brother you are there yes sir i am here good good for the bible please everybody Yeah, I am opening good, good, good. new Bible. Twenty-two, sixteen, brother. Ah, huh. Genesis twenty-two, sixteen. Correct. And said, "By myself have I sworn, sworn, said the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing and has not withheld thy son, thy only son." by myself i have sworn i have taken a oath upon myself that i shall bless uh, you see everybody through thy son no oh, but verse is very clear now god himself is taking a promise upon himself i have sworn upon myself eh correct right, no nah. so let us read eh verse uh, 15 brother mosam brother read brother verse 15 hmm in the angel of the lord call on to abraham out of heaven the second time okay. who spoke to abraham here angel angel you say god never spoke to abraham directly brother but he spoke through an angel the angel representing god actually spoke to abraham see very clearly it's given now this is the second time and the angel came and appeared when was the first time angel appeared verse 11 brother hmm and the angel of the lord called unto him out of heaven and said abraham abraham and he said here i am uh, see this is the first time the angel spoke to abraham the second time huh? you see so all these things are spoken by the angel see if you search the answers from the bible we will get answers there itself we need to Open our eyes and read uh, very carefully. Okay, we all remember that uh, the three angels came to Abraham's house, you see, and then they later went to Sodom and Gomorrah. Hmm? So who are these three angels? Let us read Genesis eighteen one and two. Genesis eighteen, brother, one and two. Hmm. Hmm. and the lord appear unto him in the plains of mer and he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day and he lifted up his eyes and looked and lo there men stood by him and when he saw them he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself to us the ground uh, you see abraham one day you see saw that uh, there were three men standing uh, you see huh? 
near him. Then immediately, what did Abraham do? Immediately, Abraham went, uh, ran to meet them and bow. You see, bow down to them. Now, who are these three men? Who are these three men? He says, the Lord appeared unto Abraham in the, uh, you see, uh, the plains of Abraham. Okay, no? No, no. You see, who are these three men? Huh? Huh? Imagine if some strangers come to your house, will you open the door? Imagine as you see them, will you run towards them? And uh, you see, holding their hands, will you greet them? Welcome, welcome, please welcome to our house. Will you do anybody for a stranger? Nobody will do that for a stranger. But if he is a very close friend, whom we know very well, as soon as we see him, what will you do? We'll run towards him. We'll tell, oh, please come, please come. Welcome, welcome, welcome to my house. That means these uh, persons would have already been known to Abraham. Now, who is this one that appeared to Abraham? The answer is given in New Testament. Here a little, here a little. Read John 8, 56, brother. John 8, chapter 56, verse, brother. Huh? John 8.56 hmm. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my Lord and he saw it and was glad. Hmm. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. He rejoiced to see my day and saw it and was glad. When he saw it? When they came to meet Abraham at his house, they saw you see, Abraham saw, you see, huh? the Lord. Huh? Yeah? So, who was he? It is our Lord Jesus Christ who appeared, huh? you see. Huh? Because, uh, dear brethren, huh? so this is how huh? we should read the scriptures. Huh? The answer is given there itself, but we need to search. Now, next, huh? then whom did uh, Moses uh, saw in the burning bush? Huh? God called him from the bush, no? Moses, Moses. Huh? Read Exodus 3 4. Krishna, brother, please read, brother. Exodus 3 4. Hmm. Exodus 3 4. Uh, Krishna, brother, you are there? Yes, sir, I am here. <laughs> I'm saying 3 4, no? Hmm. Uh, and when the Lord saw that he Turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here am I. Uh, you see, God called from the bush. Huh? Isn't it? He said, Here I am. Who called? God called from the bush, isn't it, sir? So everybody, you see, I think that God spoke to Moses. Huh? Now, who did actually Moses uh, uh, see in the bush? Read huh? one verse, uh, two verses before, brother. Read from verse two, brother. Huh? Two, sir. Correct. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out uh, of the midst of a bush. See, so who was there in the bush? Here? Angel of the Lord. Ah, angel of the Lord. So, if you take all the incidents in the Bible, everything is the same. Just we need to properly eh, study the Bible. So, this clearly proves, dear brethren, that God is living in an unapproachable light whom no man has ever seen nor can see. You see? Then who is the one who represented God in all this incident? If you see, the angel of the Lord who acted as God's representative. You see, like for example, the deliverance of the people of Israel from Egypt to the promised land. You see, huh? God protected them from the pillar of fire and protected them through the pillar of cloud. You see, huh? in all this incident, who was there? Whose presence was there in the midst of Israel? You see, the angel of the Lord. Let us read Exodus, you see, 14 chapter, 19th verse. Exodus 14, 19, brother. Please read, brother. 
Yes, sure brother. Exodus 14, 19, brother. Please. And the angel of Lord, which went before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind them. And the pillar of the cloud went from before their face and stood behind them. Uh, you see, the angel of the Lord, uh, which actually went before the camp. Uh, who was leading the camp of Israel, if you see, it was not actually Moses. The angel of the Lord was leading. And Moses was guided by that angel. You see, yeah. read Exodus 23rd chapter, verse 20 to 22. Exodus 23rd chapter, verses 20 to 22. Please read, brother. Yeah. 20 to 22. Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. See, Beware. I will send a angel. You see, how did uh, God uh, bring them out uh, by sending an angel? Then, huh? Be aware of him and obey his voice. Pro provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions for my name. See, beware of him. Huh? Be very careful with him. Obey his voice. Provoke him not. He will not pardon. He will not forgive your transgressions. Huh? Why? Why he will not forgive your transgressions? Continue. For hmm. my name is in him. Uh, my name is in him. Why? Because he is my representative. That is the reason my name is in him. You see? Huh? Continue with the next. Huh? But if thou shalt indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, wait, wait, then wait, I wait, will wait. be an... What did he say? If thou shall indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak. That means what? Uh, God is speaking through that angel. Hence the people of Israel we are supposed to obey the voice of the angel. Because that angel was God's representative. Then, brother, continue. Huh? Then I will be an enemy unto thine enemies uh, and an adversary unto thine adversaries. Then I will be an enemy. You see, dear brother, this very clearly proves that God was the one who was, uh, you see, leading through the angel. And he spoke through that uh, angel. You see, uh, and who is this uh, angel who followed uh, uh, the people of Israel, who guided the people of Israel? You see, the answer is given in 1 Corinthians 10, chapter verse 4. 1 Corinthians 10, 4, brother, please. Read, brother. Read, brother. Read, brother. Rock See? All people drank of the same spiritual rock which followed them. And who was the rock? It was Lord Jesus Christ, dear brethren. So, dear brethren, huh? so many people think, uh, uh, you see, God died on the cross. God could never die, dear brethren. And hence, you see, what happens now? Jesus died on Friday. Saturday, he was in the Grave. So Sunday was the resurrection. So Saturday, there is no Lord at all. So, you know, uh, what they think? Uh, God died on Friday and God rose on, you see, when? Sunday. So Saturday, who is not there on the earth? Uh, God himself uh, is not there. So Friday and Saturday, who is not there? God is not there because God died. Hence, you know, in England, what happens? On a Good Friday, and the day next of the Good Friday, that is Saturday, there is a lot of robbery taking place, sir. You see, in the Western countries. Why? Because they think that God is not there. Uh, imagine, just because thinking that God is not there, so much of robbery happens, means, uh, imagine, will Satan keep quiet? Uh, if God actually dies, uh, no, dear brethren. He is doing a lot of mischief 
even when God is alive. You see, when God is immortal, imagine, will he keep quiet if uh, our God dies? No, dear brethren, isn't it? And moreover, Jesus died. Uh, and who rose him from the dead? It was God who rose him from the dead. If God himself died, who rose him from the dead? Read Acts 10.40. Acts 10.40. Krishna Buddha, can you read Acts 10.40? Sure, sir. Acts 10.14. But Peter said, not so, Lord, for I have never it. Uh, 40, Acts sir? 10, 40. 10, 40, chapter. okay. Him God raised up the third day and showed him openly. See, who raised up? God. Jesus himself did not uh, rise. God raised him the third day. Then, okay. If uh, all these things uh, are correct, uh, if Jesus is the son of God, if Jesus uh, is not that God, that, that God and Jesus are separate, then why did Jesus say, I and the Father are one? Correct, no? So this question will come to our mind. Why did Jesus say, I and the Father are one? John 10.30. John 10.30. Most of the read, brother, please. John 10.30. Okay, it's uh, written here, John 10, 30. Mm -hmm. I, am, I and my father are one. You see, I and my father are one. Many people claim that uh, brother Jesus himself said that uh, I and the father are one. So, father is Jesus, Jesus is father. So, both are one and same brother. So, everything is uh, over. So, so let us uh, uh, forget that. Jesus himself is God and God himself is Jesus. Uh. You see, Jesus said, what did Jesus say? Jesus said, I and the Father are one. Did he say that I and the Father are one and the same? No, no. Saying that uh, we both are one and saying that we both are one and the same is a different statement altogether. We need to understand these words properly. You see, Jesus never said that I and the Father are both one and the same. He never said that one. He said, I and the Father are one. But read just one verse before. What did Jesus say? Jesus said, the Father which gave you all to me is greater than everybody. Read brother, verse 29. Read brother. Read verse 29. My Father which gave them me is greater than all. And See? no man is... Is greater than all. Huh? If God is greater than all, how can they both be one and the same? Therefore, this is not speaking about uh, literal oneness. This is not speaking about a physical oneness, dear brother. No. This is never speaking about the physical oneness. This is speaking about the oneness in mind. Oneness in purpose. Oneness in aims, ambitions. This is not at all speaking about the physical oneness. Like for example, you see, uh, the Bible tells, uh, you see, after marriage, uh, Husband and wife are what? One. One. That doesn't mean that they both, they both become one body and one, uh, this one. Uh, they both one and the same. Uh. Huh? Does it mean that after marriage, boy and girl become one and the same? Tell me, do they become one and the same or they will be two? They will be two, but they will be one in mind. Correct, brother. That is the reason for a smooth family, oneness of mind is required. You see? So, huh? read Matthew 19, 5, brother. Matthew 19, 5, brother. Huh? Hmm. Read, brother. Matthew 19, 5. Krishna, brother, or uh, Ashish, brother. Okay. Mm. Matthew 19 5 mm. uh, and said 
for this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall clip with to his wife and they twain shall be one place okay. this is not literal one flesh this is speaking about oneness of mind therefore what is the wife called as she is called as better half you know no english better half means what we are half but who is the better half ha huh? wife is the better half so both half together become one this is not speaking of literal oneness even though both are one oneness of mind purpose and all who is head of the family who is head of the family brother husband or wife ha husband husband both are one but even then who is that the husband is that read brother efficiency 523 brother efficiency 523 any of you can read for husband is the head of the wife even as Christ is the head of the church he is the savior of the church ah oh, husband is the head of the wife though both are one who is that the husband is said similarly dear brethren when jesus said i and the father are one he was never speaking about physical oneness he was speaking actually about oneness of purpose aims ambitions everything so do we have a verse in the bible for this one yes jesus himself clarifies this one in john 17 11 brother read with us what is the meaning of that oneness jesus tells that one in john 17:11 most some brother can you read john 17:11 okay brother oh. and now i am no more in the world but these are in the world and i came to the holy father kept through thine one name those whom do has given me that they may be one as we are ah that they may be one as we are one huh? who all should be one it seems as god and jesus are one similarly the entire church should be one it seems now you tell me is it speaking about physical oneness is it speaking about physical oneness brother tell me no no oh, this is not speaking about physical oneness this is speaking about the oneness of god and christ in mind purpose doing the will of god jesus request in prayer was as i am having that one mind for you that the entire church have the same mind towards you read verse 21 also brother read john 17 21 also brother hmm. that they all may be one as the father art in me and i in thee that they also may be one in us that the world may believe that thou hast sent me uh, oh one now that as i am in you and you are in me so let them also be one you see this is the oneness actually jesus was trying to speak to your brethren like for example you see huh, in one bus, bus ticket how many people can travel only one similarly this is speaking about not physical oneness but oneness of mind and purpose even though they both are one who is the head you see jesus is the head and who is the head for jesus almighty god is the head read first corinthians 11 3 brother first corinthians 11 3 hmm. First Corinthians eleven three. Krishna, brother, can you read? First Corinthians eleven three. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. See, very clearly it mentions so. Though husband and wife are one, who is head? Husband and the wife, huh? Head. Though Christ and church are one. Who is head? Jesus is the head. So similarly, though God and Jesus are one, who is head? God is head. It seems that even then we should understand this difference very clearly. Both are not one and the same. So 
So here it is speaking about a oneness of purpose. Uh, therefore, it is compared to a body at a brain. How our head is above the body. Similarly, Jesus is above the church. As our head controls the entire body, similarly, Jesus is the control of the entire church. And as the body has to submit to the head, similarly, the church has to submit to, you see, who? The body. Dear brethren, therefore, if you see in John 10 chapter, actually verse 29 clearly says that the Father is greater than me. Jesus never claimed himself to be equal to God. Actually, Jesus clarifies this verse to the Jewish people himself. He, say, he said, I claim to be the son of God. You see, as soon as Jesus mentioned this word that I and the father are one, the Jewish people took stones to kill him. And Jesus told, okay, okay, you tell me if I, why you want to stone me. Then you stone me. Then the people tell, we want to kill you because you claimed himself to be God. Jesus clarifies, I never claimed myself to be equal to God, but I said, I am the son of God. Read, brother. John 10. John 10, 36, brother. Can anybody read? John 10, 10, 36. John 10, 36. Muslim, brother, can you read? Yes, brother. Say you of him whom the father had sanctified and sent into the world, though blameless, because I said, I am the son of God. See, what did Jesus say? He said that I am the son of God. You see, Jesus never claimed himself to be God. You see, the many scriptures in the Bible say that, uh, you see, Jesus uh, never came of himself, but God sent him. You see, and uh, Jesus uh, uh, has got a head. Uh, that is our uh, father. Uh, and God sent him. He never came of himself. Uh, read uh, John 14, 28 and John 8, 42, brother, please. You have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If you love me, you would receive, you would rejoice because I said, I go unto the Father, for my Father is greater than I. See, my Father is greater than I. Correct? No? See, John 8 42. Hmm. Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, you would love me, for I pursued forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but See? he sent me. He sent me. God has sent therefore come. Huh? He said, Father has sent me, therefore I am come. John 657, brother. As as the living Father had sent me, and I live by my by the Father, so he that it me even he shall live by me. Mm, he shall live by me as the Father has sent me. You see, the who is greater, the one who has come or one who is sent. The one who is sent is actually greater than one who has come. Isn't it? Like, for example, so many people come as a representative, sales representative to our houses now. Correct, no? Now, who is greater actually? Is the sales representative or is the company chairman? The company chairman is the one who is greater. And when they come and speak, how do they speak? They never say that uh, I'm coming from my house and all. They represent the company and speak as if they're coming on behalf of the company. Similarly, Jesus. John 13, 16, brother. John 13, 16. Hmm. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord, neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. Mm, you see, clearly says now, the servant is not greater than the master. The servant is not greater than the one who sent him. So there is one greater than the Lord, Jesus. John 5.30, brother. Huh? I, I can of mine 
oneself do not think. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just because I seek not mine own will, but the will of the Father who is had sent me. I can do nothing of my own self. Whatever the Father does, the same thing I do. Dear brethren, actually, Jesus, this clearly shows that Jesus was existing with the Father even before the world was created. You see? So let us read the few verses for that one. Krishna Brother, can you read? John 8, 58. Can you read Krishna Brother? Yes, sir. Yes. John 8, 58. John 17, 5. Revelation 3, 14. Revelation 4, 15. John 8, 15. So John 8, 58. Correct. Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Be Abraham was I am. Before Abraham was I am. That means he was existing before Abraham. That means he was created even before God had, you see, created any human being or Abraham. Therefore, he says, Before Abraham was, I was existing. John 17, 5, brother. Huh? And now, O oh, Father, glorify thou me with thine own self with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Mm -hmm. So he existed with the Father even before the world was created and he had a special glory. We are going to see what was the special glory which Jesus had. But he was not uh, that uh, God. But he was the Son of God who was living with the uh, our Almighty God. Revelation 3.14. Hmm. Revelation 3.14. Hmm. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things said the Amen, the faithful and true witness, witnesses, the beginning of the creation of God. See? Jesus is called as the beginning of the creation of God. So, he was the one who was created first. When God decided to create anything, the first thing he created was his own son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And rest of all the things are created by Jesus, through Jesus. Read Colossians 1.15. Colossians 1.15. Who is the image of the invisible God? Ashish, your voice is getting cut. Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? Very good. Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creation? Dear brethren, therefore, all things were created, you see, by the Father through our Lord Jesus Christ. And for Lord Jesus Christ himself. You see, let us read Colossians 1, 16, 17. Both of brother, can you read? Colossians 1, 16, 17, brother. Hmm. Uh, Most of brother, you're there online? Yes, brother. Uh, brother uh, Colossians 1, yes. chapter 16, 17, brother. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or power, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things and by his him all things consist. Mm, everything was created. How? By him. And everything was created through him. Let it be anything. Whatever was created, was created by him, for him. And he is before all things. And by him, all things consist. But he was the only one who was created by God. That means, you see, God created only one direct creation. And that is our Lord, Jesus Christ. And rest of all the, you see, creations of God, were created, you see, through Jesus and for Jesus. So this one has to be clearly understood, dear brother. Let us read a few more verses. You see, John 1, 3, brother. Huh? Uh, 
most of the can read john 1 3 hmm. all things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made see all things were made by him there was nothing that was made without him so except himself he could not make himself therefore what has happened god has created him so he is the creation of god therefore it says in revelation 3 1 is the beginning of the creation of god he was one who was created first by god john 1 10 brother Also, brother, John 1 10. He was okay, brother. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. Oh, the world was made by him. The world knew him not. Revelation 1 8. Hmm. Revelation 1 8. Hmm. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, said the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. Uh, Jesus is called, therefore, the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and end. Now, what is the meaning of Alpha and Omega? It is the first and the last Greek letter. As we say, A to Z. Jesus is a A to Z of God's creation. That means, whatever God wanted to create directly, he created Jesus. He is the first direct creation of God. He is the last direct creation of God. Based on all the things God has created through Jesus. Hence, Jesus has got a special title called as Only Begotten Son. You are, in, you are observed in the Bible, brother. Whenever Jesus is called, he is called as the Only Begotten Son. He is never called as Only Son of God. Huh? You observed, no? Only yeah. begotten son. Why that word only begotten son is called? Because Jesus is the only direct creation of God. Just all creations God has created through Jesus. Okay. So the glory, you see, and the special, you see, of our speciality of Jesus is totally different from all the creations. Now, how is the difference? And what is the speciality we are going to see in the next week. So, <coughs> uh, any questions, any doubts you have as of now, we can ask. If you want to ask, or else if you want to stay and wait till all the classes are over, that means another two parts are over, you can ask me the questions later also. Also, brother, any questions, any doubts? Not, not yet, brother. Okay, okay. So, uh, request you to wait for another, uh, you see, uh, two weeks and two classes. So once those two classes are over, definitely we'll see all things in clarity. Okay, brother. Okay, brother. Sure, brother. Okay, thank you. So, Lord bless. So we'll have a ending prayer and close the.